XC Bescow. You mentioned Hubbard having two wives at the same time as an example of him having problems. These days, a lot of people, myself included, make a clear distinction between cheating and polyamory. Yet this distinction is about relationships rather than marriages. Polygamy is not legal. Could you tell us a bit more about how this whole thing with two wives worked? I mean, socially as well as legally. Were they married in a legal sense somehow? Did the wives know about it in advance and consented to it? Or was it something that Hubbard either kept secret from them or forced upon them? Okay, L. Ron Hubbard was a ladies' man. Uh, you know, he was an adulterer. He definitely, you know, and it's a little hard to believe because a lot of people look at him and just go, God, he's not very good looking. But he was charismatic. And especially in the 1940s, or well, sorry, 1950s, when he really got a lot of popularity and stuff, he, he was. He could, you know, he could light up a room and he could speak quite well to a group of people. What he was saying might not necessarily have made a lot of sense, but the way he said it and his sense of humor and his charisma definitely did make an impression on people. Now, how the two wives story happens is this. He married a woman named Polly, Polly Grubb. I think it was in the 1920s that they actually got married. They had a couple kids. And he was a writer, and he was running around the country, and then he uh, went into the war. He was married this whole time to Polly. He was kind of a um, uh, philanderer during all this time. He would travel. They lived in, uh, I think, predominantly Washington State. He traveled to New York often, uh, had affairs, this sort of thing, right? And, uh, and Polly just kind of put up with it. And... He um, then, the war happened, and he went into the Navy, and then after he came out of the Navy, while he was being discharged, he was living down in California while his wife and kids were growing up up in Seattle. And they were still married. I mean, he'd go up and visit and this sort of thing every now and again, but he was a pretty deadbeat dad. Um, but he was spending most of his time down in California, clearly not super interested in the marriage, not bringing his wife and kids down to California because they didn't want to come down to California. They had a whole life up in, uh, I think it was uh, Bremerton or Port Orchard or something like that up in, up in Washington State. And Polly's parents were there. I mean, they were established. They had a house. So they were, not, they were waiting for Ron to come back to, to Washington, but he was hanging out down in L.A. And this was in the mid-1940s when he started getting involved with um, the occult and with Aleister uh, Crowley's uh, minion, Jack Parsons, uh, who was a rocket scientist. This was all in Pasadena, California. Actually, literally five minutes. He, he stayed five minutes away from where I grew up in Pasadena. So during that time, when, he, when Hubbard went and lived with Jack Parsons, right after he was discharged from the Navy, he met Sarah Northrup. Sarah was Jack Parsons' girlfriend. And they were living in Jack Parsons' mansion along with other people because Jack attracted different people to his, you know, uh, mansion because he just liked having people there. And Jack was practicing occult, the occult, with, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, doing the OTO, you know, Ordo Templi Ordinus uh, Orientis work under Crowley. And Hubbard got involved in that. But Hubbard was a con man and he was conning Jack Parsons out of money and scheming with him to, um, to you know, he was scheming to uh, rip Jack Parsons off, and he also ripped off Jack Parsons' girlfriend, Sarah. And they took off to Florida to start some business with Jack Parsons' money, and that tanked, and Jack Parsons found out that they were spending his money and taking advantage of him, and he went out there and shut them down. And Hubbard and Sarah then managed to have one of the boats that they had conned, that they had bought with Jack Parsons money. They sold the boat, got married, and then moved to New York and then ended up back in California. And then ended up back in Washington State. And that was awkward as hell. And I don't, you know, I'm not going to go into all the details of this, but they were up in Washington. Polly did not know about Sarah. Sarah did not know about Polly. So that is absolutely without question, that is bigamy, or sorry, polygamy. So, um, so Hubbard then worked out the divorce with Polly, right? That was done, that became a done deal. And he was then just married to Sarah. And they then, and then he, um, I think they went out to New England 
uh, and this was 1948-1949 time period, and Hubbard hooked up with, um, oh, Joseph Campbell, the guy who was editing uh, Astounding Magazine, and that's when he wrote Dianetics, and uh, at, at uh, Joseph Campbell's house in, uh, in New England, and that was when Dianetics became a thing, and that was when that took off, and then, uh, you know, the rest is history, so to speak. So that's the story of the two wives and uh, Hubbard's uh, polygamy, and it's not a pleasant story. Hubbard abused both of those women, certainly emotionally, if not physically, and ended up doing some really bad things to, uh, to Sarah because they had a baby. And that's all, you know, again, written uh, history. You can look that up. I'm not gonna talk about it in, this, in the answer to this question, but that Hubbard was just not a good guy when it came to how he treated women.